So here's our practice quiz. So maybe answers. Let's see. So it's not letting me write anything, so I guess I will just have to talk about this. Um, so the first question here is, what do economists mean when they say free trade benefits all? So here, again, for each of these um, questions, you're looking at, you know, as many sentences as you need just to answer the question. Don't feel like you have to fill up the space or that I'm expecting a lot. Um, you just need enough to be able to adequately answer the question. And you could probably answer this question in three sentences or maybe even four sentences. I'm not sure it would take much more than that, though. Um, well, you could add, obviously, a bit more. You could add graphs if you want to as well. And a perfect example would be where you would have, number one, one of the arguments you, or one of the things you could draw here is you could draw two production possibility frontiers with different slopes. And then you would describe in words, you would say um, each country has a comparative advantage in one of the goods and then trades with the other. And then you would put a point outside of each of their frontiers and then say each country would be able to consume outside of its production possibilities frontier if it traded. Thus, free trade benefits all. If you said all those things, key things I'm looking for there are things like comparative advantage, um, consuming outside of the production possibilities frontier. Those would all be the things um, that would be most useful. Okay, number two. What do economists mean when they say there's no such thing as a free lunch? Here, what you're doing is you're talking about the notion of the opportunity cost and the fact that um, there are there is scarcity in a number of different things, one of which is money, but another of which is time. And what we would say here is that even if something is free, there is always something sacrificed to, to do that thing. Um, in this case, you could say there's no such thing as a free lunch because if someone invites you to lunch and, say the, and says that they will pay, you have to give up that time to eat with that person and eat the food that they are buying. Maybe you don't even like the food. Um, right. So imagine if you're a meat lover and I say, hey, come have a meal with your professor and we're going to go to a vegetarian restaurant. Well, there the opportunity cost is quite evident because neither of those two things would you want to do. Go to eat with your professor nor eat at a vegetarian restaurant. So key things I'd be looking for here are things like opportunity cost and a notion of scarcity. Okay, now, number three. Why is a production possibilities frontier typically bowed outward? Draw how such a curve would look. So, drawing it shouldn't be that difficult. Then the other part to this would be um, describing why is it typically bowed outward. That it's typically bowed outward because there's... Um, changing opportunity costs. These opportunity costs are increasing as you go across the graph from left to right. And the reason why is because the resources become mismatched for producing certain goods. So key ideas here would be you drew the, um, you drew the graph and you talked about there being increasing opportunity costs for mismatch of goods. And then finally, we have, um, instead of like giving it to you, like drawing it out, um, I gave you a table that shows different points on two different countries' production possibility frontiers, where um, point 
A for Mexico is 100 cars, 800 pounds of wheat. Point A for United States is 300 cars, 1,000 pounds of wheat. And then B shows an increase of 400 cars with a reduction of 400 pounds of wheat. So it's a one-to-one -one trade off. Here, I'm going from 300 to 500, so I'm gaining 200, but I'm losing only 100. So now we've set up the fact that there is a different opportunity cost in each country. For Mexico, it's one to one. In the United States, it's two to one. Which would then mean who, produce, who produces wheat the cheapest? That would be Mexico where the sacrifice is one for one. As opposed to the United States, where to produce a pound of wheat, you have to give up two cars. So who has a comparative advantage of producing wheat? That would be Mexico. Showing your work for full credit, that would mean setting up those ratios, showing the losses of the cars to the wheat. And I can see a typo here. Which country has an absolute advantage, not absolutely advantage, absolute advantage. Absolute advantage is determined by where the production possibilities frontier um, has the furthest intercept. And for wheat, that would look to be the United States because they can produce more. Sorry, here. Okay.